Well, good morning. It's Tuesday, and you can say you've officially survived another Monday. And this morning, I'd like to talk a little bit about forgotten covenants. Proverbs 2.17 says, uh, uh, Which forsaketh the guide of her youth, and forgetteth the covenant of her God. You know, I found it interesting. Uh, on December 29th, 2006, the United States Treasury uh, received a payment from the government of England for $83 million. Buddy, remember hearing about that? I don't, I don't remember hearing anything about that. But it was the final payment on a loan that was negotiated in 1946 to help England recover from the devastating effects of World War II. The original loan was $3.3 billion. Now, at that time, today that would be equivalent to about $55 billion dollars in, in today's money, not a loan I've ever tried to take out of the bank, but $55 billion, uh, is what it was, and it was made at 2% interest. So, um, you know, the, the funds here, <coughs> excuse me, the funds were used to to prop up this, the British Empire because uh, it was having problems with all the devastation, and over the years, the, the payments continued uh, to be made until the loan was finally marked. Uh, after, on December 29th, 2006, it was marked paid uh, in full, even though six decades had passed from the original loan, the terms and the agreements were not forgotten. And, you know, that kind of dedication, you, you look at it today and you think about it, you think, man, that's, that's kind of rare, but it's sad that it is rare. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be rare, you know, uh, you know, that too often people make covenants that they're not willing to keep, you know, whether it's in families or, you know, walking away from the homes, walking away from mortgages. And I understand there there are circumstances and things that happen, but I'm just talking about in, in general, we, we see it happening uh, all the time, uh, employment contracts. You know, you see on the news sometimes how, uh, you know, a, a teacher, uh, you know, I've seen it where a teacher in a Christian school, they decided that, you know, they were going to to uh, violate the rules. Maybe it was, you know, through uh, through some uh, uh, some other circumstance. But in other words, the the contract said they couldn't do this, and uh, but they decide they changed and decided they were going to do it anyway. And so, you know, the school let them go because they violated the contract. And then the kids all protest because they thought it was, you know, this person was such a good teacher, but. The, the issue wasn't whether or not that it was a good teacher. It was that a contract was put into place and the contract was broken. And, uh, you know, and we, we don't teach kids anything when we come up and say, well, they, it doesn't matter whether they break something or not. They were, you know, they were just a, a, a good, you know, they were just a good person. So, you know, whether you never intended to keep a commitment uh, or not uh, here, you know, is that people make, or, you know, it, only they know, but sometimes it, it, the reason everybody wants to say is well because because things have changed, you know the the things have changed and so you know we we break covenants because things are 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 different here, but you know as God's children we should never uh, never ever uh, forget lose sight of the covenants and the promises that we made from God. You know He's heard every promise we've ever made. He's seen every contract we've ever signed, every agreement, every commitment, everything that we've done, and it should be carried out with completion. You know, matter of fact, God is quite blunt in uh, in what he says, you know, in uh, in evaluating those that come. Here's what it says in Ecclesiastes 5.4. It says, When thou vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay it, for he hath no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Tell you, keeping our com our commitments are important for Christians, because uh, it's as much a part of of God's character, and and so we need to we need to show that character. We need to display that. We need to remember it. You know, in the prayer and dedication of the temple, Solomon said this in First Kings eight fifty six. He said, "There hath not failed one word of all His good promise." Why should we keep our promises? Because God kept every promise that He's made to us. He's promised he'd never leave us nor forsake us. He's promised that he would take care of our needs. He's promised to go and prepare a place for us. He's kept every promise. And it should be important for us and we should be we should be dedicated 
and, and try our best as much as we can to keep the promises. Keep the promises that you make. So be careful today when we go through the day and we go through this week and we make promises because we should keep every promise that we make. You have a good day and just keep that in mind. Thanks. Bye.